So today we're going to talk about weeds, and a weed in the most broad sense of the word is any plant which is out of place. This doesn't mean that the plant is bad. This doesn't mean that we have to get rid of the plant just because it's out of place. It just means that it's not what we plan to be there. So in a garden, a plant out of place is going to be anything that comes up that we didn't plant that isn't specifically our crop. However, we're going to take a look at one of the gardens here and see why it is that I'm taking some weeds out and why it is that I'm leaving some other ones. And of course, everyone's opinion about these things is going to be different. This is just what I'm doing. We're going to check out weeds in the East Garden today. There's a previous video about this garden that talked about the crops that we're growing here, which include quinoa and corn and amaranth and sesame and chickpeas and giant sunflowers. Today we're going to look at the weeds. So, here is a plant. Big ground covery thing. It's got really pretty little orange flowers on it. If you're familiar with desert plants of the American Southwest, you'll recognize the genus right away as being Spheralsea, which is the globe mallow. This is the gooseberry leaf globe mallow. So apparently these leaves are supposed to look somewhat like gooseberry. Mm, not so much to me. Anyway, I got the idea for this off of the um, Facebook group for native plants in New Mexico. So they could be wrong, but it definitely on the species, but it definitely is a Spheralsea. Anyway, Spheralsea, uh, many of them, species in this genus, have been used for medicinal purposes before, including this one by Native American people who lived here before. Uh, this one was used for digestive uses. I'm leaving it because it's got these pretty orange flowers, which I love because it's not in the way, and because it is making a ground cover, because you'll notice that we are doing lots of mulching in this garden. Now, mulch runs out. We just happen to have a bunch of these bales at the property here. So in the future, if you don't have bales, if we don't have bales and we have ground cover instead, well, that could work out pretty well for us. Another plant I'm keeping because it's a, in part because it's a ground cover, is this one. It's called Green Leaf Five Eyes. You can take a look at these flowers here. That might look kind of familiar to you if you know tomatoes and peppers or potatoes because this is indeed in the same family. This is a nightshade. That's a perennial plant. And I just love those little flowers there. You can see how the leaves actually look rather similar to that globe mallow we were just looking at. So before this started blooming, I actually thought it was just more of that globe mallow. I didn't know that it was something different. And this one was used medicinally by Native Americans in the area before to treat swellings. I'm keeping it because, again, it's a ground cover that helps keep down other weeds, helps shade the soil to keep uh, moisture. So it acts as like kind of a living mulch. And I sure don't mind if it just sticks around. This rather impressive looking aster plant here is called Golden Crown Beard or cow pen daisy. Cow pen daisy because it often comes up in disturbed areas like cow pens and this is a disturbed area being a garden. Gardens are disturbed areas. So this is in the aster family. This will get flowers on it that look kind of like sunflowers later and this plant had an, a lot of uses for the people who lived here before for the tribes for the Native Americans. Well the seeds are edible the plant was used medicinally to treat spider bites and also as an emetic, that is something to make you throw up if you need to. And then the flowers, the petals, and the stems also had different ceremonial uses, including protecting oneself or one's lodging from lightning. The plant has a superficial resemblance to lamb's quarters. However, it has a really strong smell to it that lamb's quarters doesn't have. And as soon as it blooms, it'll be really obvious that it's not lamb's quarters. So I left that plant here because it's on the edge. It's on the outside of the planting area. It's totally not in the way at all. And because I remember from it before that it made these pretty flowers. So this plant here is called puncture vine. You might notice these little seeds. There's the fruit on there. Do you see that between my fingers? That 
is going to dry into seeds. That's a little collection of, what is that? One, two, three, four, five little seeds on there with those spines on them. Punxer vine, they call it, because those can lodge themselves in a shoe or a car tire or many other things and go traveling along and spreads itself that way. They can also be painful to step on. So this is a weed that I'm definitely be getting rid of. Wow, just uh, just now just squeezing the fruit that hadn't even dried yet that was pointy and sharp. So yeah, a lot of people really dislike this plant. I'm not going to say I dislike it, but I'm going to say that it's not welcome here because it'll be painful to step on later. Here, this is some amaranth that we're growing here in this garden. This is called marbled amaranth. Now, it looks an awful lot like one of the weeds that comes up here, which is, uh, there's a lot of wild amaranth that comes up here. For example, this patch of it right here. It's a really healthy patch. Not how similar it looks, right? I mean, in part, I only know that this is the weed and the other one's the one I want because of where they are. Uh, this will also cross with that one, they're wind pollinated. And so these I'll need to get rid of before those flower if I want to keep the seed clean, you know, keep the seed pure on that one, which is kind of what I want to do since we ordered it as its own variety. Uh, you can't eat these leaves. They're, they're not bad. Actually, I had a bunch of amaranth for dinner uh, a couple nights ago when I thinned the amaranth that we were growing there on purpose. Oh, here it is. It's about to bloom. You can see on top there. And if you know spinach, at all. That might look a little similar. These plants are related. It has a similar taste to spinach. Uh, you definitely want to cook this one because it has a high oxalic acid content, which is not uh, poison, but which prevents the body from uptaking calcium, and that can be unhealthy in large amounts. Okay, now here is cochia. This is one of the very common weeds on this property. This is a very small version of Cochia, Cochia, which is Bassia scoparia. We'll look outside the garden here and you see these tall green plants here. That's all Cochia. It gets four or five, six feet high. It really takes over the area. This is a plant that's native originally to Europe and to Asia, loves disturbed areas and really thrives in these kinds of agricultural areas like this. And um, so that one I keep out of the garden because it just it, uh, it just gets really big, really fast, takes up a lot of room. And it doesn't seem to have many purposes either, unfortunately. It's not like uh, it's got edible leaves or anything like that. So the cochia I get rid of, generally speaking. Well, here we are, bindweed. A lot of people would just call this morning glory. However, morning glory is an entire family of plants. There's literally hundreds of things that are in the morning glory family. This is called bindweed. Notice how when I pulled it up, it just broke off. The roots go down a long ways in a big tangled mess. Uh, you'd have to pull out all of the roots to get the whole plant, but that usually doesn't happen. Usually they break. Little bits of broken root can grow new plants. There's really nothing to do with this one except to keep pulling it up. And if I did leave it to go, it would um, start climbing up all the corn in this patch, uh, especially as the corn got taller, and it would start pulling it all down. So this is actually a weed that definitely could have some bad effects on the crop. And if you notice here, it's very common throughout this whole part of the garden where the corn is. So that'll be a source of labor the entire season. And there is the sunflower native to the prairies, Helianthus annuus. I'm not sure if that was native to this exact area, but it's close by. There's the ones that I planted back there along the fence. That's the one that volunteered. I think it volunteered a little bit earlier. And notice how, wow, that's a happy, healthy plant right there. And of course, my last name, Sonnenblum. Sonnenblumma is German for sunflower. I have a special affinity to them, so I tend to leave them when they come up, or if they come up crowded, I, um, I will thin them so that they can all get big. 
you know, next to that is prairie evening primrose. The seeds and the fruits of this plant are edible. I had no idea. I just found that out. People also used to smoke this plant and use different parts of it for ceremonial purposes. This one blooms in the afternoon, early evening, and then by mid-morning, the flowers tend to wilt. You can see the wilted, wilted flowers on here. They turn a little bit pink as they wilt. It's kind of pretty, really pretty plant. And this is one plant here. It's gotten really big because it's right next to the irrigation. This is the only one that was in this garden. I left it because I really like the flower and it turned out not to be in the way either. Then when I was researching it today, I found out, oh, you can eat parts of it. Well, that's great. So we're gonna try that later. Okay, this plant was really common here in the spring and it's mostly died out now. It had really pretty lavender flowers. This is called Arizona Facilia or scorpion weed. Scorpion weed because the inflorescences come out with a curve or a spiral on them looking sort of like a scorpion's stinger tail. So this makes a, this is an annual, comes up in the winter time, dies by the early summer usually. I think this one's still alive only because it's right next to irrigation. But this one makes a nice ground cover and where it was coming up and covering the ground, I wasn't getting the cochia or some of the other weeds that I don't like as well. So that one I've been leaving wherever and founding it and letting it go to seed hoping that it will spread. So check out this plant here. This is one of the more interesting plants I've found in the garden, at least to me. Look at the tiny little flowers on there. White and pink. This is called Abert's Wild Buckwheat. These plants are often very much favored by pollinators, so that's a great reason to keep them around. A decoction, that is a tea, of this plant was used by the Rama Navajo to treat cuts on humans and on horses. Now, why is it called Abert's Wild Buckwheat? Well, it's named after James William Abert, who was an army officer and an explorer and a bird collector who participated in several expeditions and surveys in the 1840s and in the 1850s. So I have to just say that this kind of thing really bothers me when plants are named after white explorers who come through because this plant's been here for, of course, you know, many thousands of years, has a history of use by another people, and all of that's being ignored in order to, quote, honor this person who's just a military guy and whatever. I mean, you know, he could be the coolest guy in the world, and it's still, he's not as cool as this plant. We just shouldn't name plants after people. It's ridiculous. Name them after one of their features, or after some animal that likes to eat it, or, or have a poet come in. Anything would be better than naming it after a person. Okay, check out this lovely plant. This is a plant that was really common here in the springtime. I'll put a photo up of it blooming. It's called Golden Smoke, or Fume Wart. It's Corydalis aurea. Aurea is golden. Corydalis. So in traditional Chinese medicine, a closely related plant, Corydalis solida, is, has been used as a painkiller for over a thousand years. So this species is also used as a painkiller. It's also used to treat painful menstruation, diarrhea, bronchitis, sore throats, stomach aches, and heart disease. It's used as a sedative in combination with skullcap and valerian a lot of times, they say. So I've read that the root is the medicine. I've also read you can use the whole plant. It tastes very, very bitter. I harvested a bunch of this when it was in flower this spring and got it tincturing. So we can try it out. So this being a very valuable medicine plant, I definitely am leaving it in a garden.